Hi all, I'm going to present an entertaining game today, not particularly instructive, but I suppose one could argue it shows how you can do a king evacuation. Playing white was Robin Haldane, I was playing black, it was the gold is green quick play on the weekend just gone, 30 minutes each, he played e4, I played the French defence, after d4, d5, knight c3, so far so good, I played knight f6 because I like trying to encourage white to close the centre. He played now e5, so I thought, great, I just played knight fd7, I'm going to undermine his centre now with, with c5 after that. But after knight fd7, he had a nasty surprise for me. He played queen h5. My first thought, um, well, this was very unusual, and I thought, couldn't I just put pressure on d4? So even though I don't really know anything about this, I, I played c5, and after knight f3, bishop e7 to stop any bishop g5s which might be quite dangerous, I thought, because um, I don't want him um, potentially with menacing threats of knight b5 to d6. After bishop g5, though, he persisted in this trying to exchange off my dark square bishop, so potentially he's coming into my, my dark d6 square with knight b5. Here, though, I played g6 to evict his queen. After queen g4... I was really surprised here. I thought, why can't I just take on g5 now? And after knight takes g5, why not just take on d4? But here, he surprised me again. He played queen f4. And I suddenly thought, hold on a sec. Can I really castle here? Or is it too dangerous? So, castles, I thought queen h4 was too dangerous for me at the time. Because if h5, then g4. However, can you spot a refutation of this whole thing? Why would g4 be far too slow here, seemingly ripping open um, this g line, or, you know, g takes and h takes, threatening mate on h7? What would you play here as black? Um, if you want to stop the video, or, you know, to give yourself time, have a look at that um, from this point. I'll tell you uh, what is a really good move here now. Knight takes e5. That sort of refutes g4, because if g takes h5 here, then queen takes g5, exploiting the fact that the white king's still in the centre. So if queen takes g5, knight f3 check, forking queen and king. So that's why this might be too slow, this g4, because just simply knight takes e5. I didn't see that in the game, and instead we see a uh, an exciting king evacuation. I play instead f6. He takes on e6. And now I took on e5, thinking if I can get away with this, this mass of pawns is going to be really good. And I was lucky with what he played next. He played knight g7 check. And in post mortem, queen f3 actually secures white a big advantage. And that's proven by Ribka. You can see the annotation notes in, in the uh, description of this video. I won't go into that now. We'll just have a look at the game. So knight g7, king e7. And now I'd seen all this, and I thought, after knight takes d5, surely my king can just evacuate with king d6. After queen f7. Now, I thought this was a clear blunder, because I've got queen a5 check picking up this knight. And he apparently had overlooked this as well. Which is what makes this kind of game kind of entertaining, that there's these um, blunders and mishaps, but it is 30 minute chess. But here he carried on the attack by playing knight c3. So if I don't take that knight, he's going to castle queenside and, and um, pinning that pawn. So I thought, oh, okay, I have to take the knight, allow him to castle queenside with check, so my king can come now to c7. I thought here that if knight e6, then king b6, and I thought I'd be safe. He actually plays, though, queen e7. So he leaves some of the suspense here. I play knight c6. After knight e6, I play king b6 anyway. And I'm thinking I'm fairly safe here. But now he threatens me again with queen d6. So he's threatening now queen c7 check. Or is that that's actually mating? So he's threatening mate. So I thought, OK, I can create an escape hole here. I can play a6. And now... He plays knight c7, so he's attacking my, my poor rook. Here, perhaps, I should have maybe taken that pawn on b2. I don't know why I left it. I just played rook b8. And after check, king a7, knight takes c3. He's getting some pawns. He's um, 
got six pawns against my five. After knight d4, if this really did occur in the game, I was trying to reconstruct this game, then white does have a very nice tactic here. See if you can spot it. Um, either stop the video, you know, to give yourself time. I'm going to say the move uh, very shortly. Now, in fact, rook takes d4. If this really was the position, rook takes d4 here. With the idea of e d, queen takes d4, full king, the poor king again, and the rook this time on h8. So what would be better here? Anyway, in the game, bishop d3, and after queen c5, I thought the worst was over. And I was wrong, because after b4, knight e6, bishop c4, there's a very loose point in my position here, the e5 pawn. After b5, bishop d5, I play bishop d7, and now he's threatening to win yet another pawn, and what can I do about that? I decided to attack his knight, he played king b2, and initially I had ideas of sacking the exchange, but I was starting to be put off by it, I didn't really see anything clear. So I actually just went rook f8 now, to potentially defend that pawn with rook f5. But he just took on e5, and... I felt compelled to now to play this rook d8, because in this position here, he's now threatening, bishop takes, and if knight takes, rook takes d7. So my pieces are quite loose here, I can't move this, so in fact, I'm losing material now because of this pressure, these rooks blasting down on my poor knights, which are now not very secure at all. So I play rook bd8, and he takes on e6, and... If bishop takes, then he's got rook takes d4, rook takes d4. Well, let's have a look. Bishop takes. He could have played just rook takes d4 and rook e6. In fact, he played rook e4. Let's have a look at this. Rook takes d4, rook d4, rook e6. In fact, there's rook takes b4 check, and Ripper thinks black's doing very nicely indeed. But maybe he played stronger in the game. He played just rook e4 here. So what is black doing here? Rook takes f2, I played, and he took. And I thought, okay, I'm going to be better in this endgame. Surely I'll be better in this endgame. I'll be some, at least um, a pawn up after this bishop f5. This, this poor c2 pawn is being victimized now. However, he takes my h pawn. And now, after this rook d2... If this really was the game, then here's another huge blunder. After a4, I played an inferior move again. I should have played bishop e6. If bishop e6, king a3, now rook c2 would be good. Because this bishop is eyeing h3, there's no rook h3s. If the knight moves, then rook a2, mate. So this would be quite troublesome for black. But no, in the game, I played bishop c2 check just trying to um, win a pawn because after knight takes rook d3 I thought um, I still had some chances here but no we reach this position where he's winning my a pawns and miraculously his king even though it's stuck right on the a line and mine seems to be already halfway across the board his king is still able to get to my pawn in time after this rook exchange. So I take, and I should have really counted at this point all the, all the tempo, but no, I think I only had um, about two minutes left anyway at this, this point. Uh, so the kings start marching, and unfortunately, it's a draw. So that was an entertaining 30 minute game on the weekend. I, I did score four out of six in the tournament, and I was quite pleased that I was. Um, doing well against Piggott, who won the tournament. In fact, I had a winning position. But um, let's have a quick overview and summary of this game again. So it was a French defence, and this early Queen h5. I'm playing it apparently for about um, over 20 years, in fact. So, um, you know, I was surprised. I just went for the d4 pressure. But, um, yeah, I, I did get um, concerned about this um, idea of queen h4 and g4 at the time, not seeing this knight takes e5 resource. So after this um, f6, it really was a dramatic game, which um, I was lucky he didn't play more accurately. So um, 
This wasn't um, all over after winning the peace by a long stretch. My king had to evacuate and then I found my e5 point was vulnerable along with these knights. They weren't so secure at all. This poor isolated e-pawn was targeted as well as these pieces which were all kind of loose in the position. So he went, he won some material back and the end game fizzled out into a draw which didn't really favour either of us for winning a prize in, in the gold screen. So we were both outside of the prizes at the end of the tournament with um, four out of six. Oh well, that's the fun of Blitz Chess. I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.